Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today, kind of carrying on with the theme of, you know, absolute and local maximum and minimum values of a function. I'm going to show you an example of how to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of this function here, f of x equals x minus ln of x, on the closed interval 1 half to 2. So this kind of builds off of the extreme value theorem that I talked about a couple days ago, and I'll link to that video up here if you want to check that out. But basically, we have a function that is continuous on this entire closed interval, one half to two. So we know that an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum must exist on this function within this closed interval here. So as a result, what we want to do is we want to figure out what th those absolute max and min values actually are in this case. So really when you're trying to do a problem like this, there's going to be three steps that you're going to want to follow in order to find these absolute maximum and minimum values. And I'll show you what those three steps are now. So the first step to finding absolute maximum and minimum values of a function on a closed interval is to first find the critical numbers. So the first thing we need to do is find f prime of x and we're going to use this to find our critical numbers. The important thing though is we only want to consider the critical numbers that are within this closed interval. Or I guess rather, we only really need the critical numbers that are within the open interval with the same endpoints. So we don't need to worry about x equals 1 half or x equals 2 yet. If one of these endpoints happens to be a critical number, we'll take care of those a little later on. For now, we just need the critical numbers that are between, but not including, our two endpoints of our, our interval. So in order to find the critical numbers, I do have a video on this. I'll, put, I'll link to it if you want to check that out. But what we need to do is we need to find the derivative of x or of f of x first. So the derivative of this function, the derivative of x is just 1. And then minus the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So this is our derivative. So to find our critical numbers, all we need to do is, first of all, we need to figure out where our function, where our derivative equals zero. So we're just gonna take our derivative and set it equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve this for x and that'll give us our critical numbers or at least some of our critical numbers. So solving this, we can add one over x to both sides. and that'll cancel there, and we'll just get one over x equals one. And then we can multiply both sides by x, and that'll give us, these will cancel here, so we'll just have one equals one times x, which is x. So x equals one is one of our critical numbers. Also, we need to not only consider where f prime equals zero, but also where f prime does not exist. If we look at this function, there's really only one thing that stands out as a possible thing that would cause this function to not exist. And that is we have a fraction here, right? Whenever you have a fraction, the first thing you should think is you cannot divide by zero. So this entire F prime function will not exist if we ever divide by zero. We will divide by zero whenever our denominator of our fraction equals zero. So if we just take our whole denominator and set it equal to zero, that would tell us where this function does not exist. Since our entire denominator is just x, x equals zero, that has already solved for x and that's already given us one of our critical numbers. So our only critical numbers of this function, f prime of x, are, or I'm sorry, our only critical numbers of our function, f of x up here, are x equals zero and x equals one. However, I just said, we only need to consider the critical numbers that are within this interval here x equals zero is not in that interval. So we can actually ignore this. We don't need it for this problem. All we need is this critical number right here, x equals one. So that's the only number that we're going to keep and move forward with. We're gonna have x equals one is one of our critical numbers. Now, the second step we can go on to, now that we found all of our critical numbers within that interval, that's the whole first step. So now, what we need to do in the second step is we need to add basically just the endpoints of our closed interval. 
So the second step is just going to give us also x equals one half and x equals two. We also need to consider these as possible places where our absolute max and min values occur. So the second step is always just going to give us these two extra critical values to consider. So now after the first two steps, we have three possible x values where our absolute max and min values might occur on this function within this closed interval. So now our third step is to take all three of these possible critical numbers, one half, one, and two, and we're going to plug all three of those critical values into our function and figure out which one is the highest and which one is the lowest. So really, all that means is we're going to our original function. We don't need to worry about our derivative anymore. We only need the original. And we're going to plug in these three values. So we're going to plug in 1 half. We're going to plug in 1. And we're going to plug in 2. So plugging in 1 half for x is going to give us 1 half minus ln of 1 half, which is going to give us an irrational number, not a very nice number. But this is about 1.193. Now we can go to our next one. Really, the only way to do this, unfortunately, is by plugging it into a calculator. So um, that's really all, all you have to do there. For f of 1, we're going to just replace our x with 1. 1 minus ln of 1. ln of 1 is actually 0, so we won't need a calculator for this one. We're just going to get 1 minus 0, which is 1. And then for f of 2, we're going to get 2 minus ln of 2, which again, plugging that into a calculator is going to give us about 1.307. So now these are our possible maximum and minimum values. We can see this is the biggest. So this is going to be our absolute maximum on this closed interval. And we can see that this is the smallest. So this is going to be our absolute minimum within that closed value. So that's really all there is to it. You just need to take them back to the original function f and just plug in our possible values that we got from the first and the second step and whatever your outputs are are going to be your possible absolute max and min values the biggest one will be your max the smallest one will be your min and that's all there is to it